Hi, my name is Christopher Madrigal from the Open OBD team. And chances are, you drive a car. Now, if you're anything like me and you don't know the first thing about cars, as soon as that check engine light comes on, your instinct is to panic and also to take it to a manufacturer or a service repair shop. All cars in the US are required by law to adhere to the OBD standard. OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. The servicer will use the OBD port on your car to diagnose the root issue and sprinkle in a couple of extra fees on top. But what if you could perform the troubleshooting at home? What if you were able to connect to your car's diagnostic system and then read out all of the trouble codes to your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop? You could go out today and buy an OBD module, connect it to your car, find a compatible app for your phone, and link the two through Bluetooth. But the problem is that these apps can be rather insecure. Some of these apps may require some form of user accounts, and I don't really trust third parties with my personal information. So instead, you might opt in for a free app. But even these apps use ads that can connect you and the fact that you're using some form of car diagnostic system. Some of these apps also implement a form of cloud connectivity. Let's say you want to link your Dropbox account and collect logs. But the issue is that this imposes extra entry points for attackers to gain access to your personal information. Some of these modules are also hackable. If an attacker were to go and clear out the check engine light from your car's computer, you might not even realize there's an issue until it's too late. My team originally set out to design a single module that the user could connect securely with over Bluetooth, read off any of the data they wanted, and with peace of mind that that data belonged only to them. But in this age of the Internet of Things, we realized that our design could scale to even enterprise level solutions. So we set out to create not just a module, but an entire platform, one that users would find easy enough to use simply with their phones or their tablets, and one that developers can continue to expand. The module itself is pretty small. It's of roughly the diameter of a quarter, and it takes up very little space. It fits right in the palm of my hand. A box that encloses this device would easily get out of the way of the driver and remain inconspicuous. So to get started, I'll go ahead and open up the app. Um, you can see that I've kind of already messed a little bit with the module. Um, the last message on the serial output states that the module is discoverable. So that means I can go ahead and connect with my phone. When I open up the app, we see that it recognizes that it's connected to my phone and it tells us the pin that we need to pair it with in case this is a new connection. These PADs, their numbers, they just stand for um, the data field that we want from the car. And let's say I want to find out what the coolant temperature is. So that's PID5. I can just make a request. So as soon as I make the request, we can see that um, the request was sent in the form of JSON. It's pretty printed on the serial output and on the app, um, but I remove all of the extra white space when the request is in transit. So the request, it's made, it's made up of two fields. In this case, it's just the PID and the sequence of our request in case any particular request gets dropped. And then we can see on the serial output that the module recognized the request and then it outputs this reply. And we can see that that reply is exactly what we get as a response on the app. So when we get the response, it's for the same PID of the same sequence, and the result is given in a third field. And then I can go ahead and make a, a different request. So now I'll request the engine RPM, and we get about the same thing. Um, it's just a different PID. Of course, the sequence number is incremented, and the result is the same. Um, and I can actually go ahead and just make several requests at a time. Um, and what happens is uh, sometimes these get dropped because we're putting a lot of data through the UART stream. But when I made that rapid request, uh, let's see, I made a request with sequence three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I got my responses in that order three, four, five, six, and seven. So in this case, I didn't drop any of my requests. Unfortunately, our current module can't actually read from a car. So the result value is just hard coded into the program. Um, when we get the connector, OBD connector, uh, then we'll be able to plug that into our module, plug that into our car, 
and immediately call one function, um, which can actually go ahead and, and make the OBD request on behalf of the user.